áudio, prestando áudio, e é, considerando-se a, a importância é, desse tema, né, desse webinar, nós vamos estar fazendo esse webinar em inglês. Né? Nós temos alguns, alguns colegas, algumas pessoas uh, de fora do Brasil que estarão também participando, então eu estou com o material todo em inglês e, e vamos estar fazendo em inglês. É, então, vou, vou começar né, a já falar um pouquinho da regra do webinar e depois já iniciamos a apresentação. É, so, uh, well, our web, webinar will spend one hour, and the doubts related with the presentation can be sent by chat, and uh, we will answer some questions uh, after after the webinar, okay? And also, if someone has any additional doubts that you want to discuss a little bit more deeply. We can also discuss uh, in another day, in another opportunity. So, uh, thank you very much for uh, everyone that is participating in the event. And I will, uh, I will do a brief presentation about myself. So, I am the CEO and the principal consultant of RSE Consulting. Uh, we have more, uh, have more than 35 years of leadership experience in companies such as Union Carbide, DuPont, Dow, Chemical, and Braskane, and more than 25 years uh, working with process safety and risk management. Uh, we are fellow and emeritus members of uh, Center for Chemical Process Safety, and we uh, actually, we are a professor of risk management of, at the Federal University of Bahia, the post-graduation engineering course, a safety engineering course. Uh, we use it to coordinate the Responsible Care Committee at ABQ, that is the Brazilian Association of Chemical uh, Companies. And we also work it as a uh, author of uh, some international guidelines of CCPS, mainly the process safety metrics, engineering design for process safety, and recently the bow tie guideline. Uh, at this moment, we are chairman of CCPS project 261, and this project we provide uh, the translation of CCPS guideline into guidelines into Portuguese languages. Well, uh, talking a little bit about RSE Consulting, so we are a company that work with uh, risk management, and in this area we work with process risk management, business risk management, asset life cycle, uh, quantitative risk assessment, and also MFS, and uh, OSHA and other uh, legal compliance uh, evaluation. We support uh, also our after uh, diagnosis uh, or an auditor. We support uh, the implementation of risk management systems and also safety, health, and environmental uh, management systems. We, we support uh, some companies uh, in coaching in safety, in professional and organizational safety for individual leaders, uh, some uh, and also some executive and also some teams. Mainly, uh, we also work with uh, human reliability, uh, doing a diagnosis and supporting uh, the company and be better related with safety culture and human reliability. We support companies developing also soft and hard skills, personal skills, and also we work with some companies supporting uh, the mechanical integrity process related with uh, maintenance evaluations and linking, doing a link between 
the mechanical integrity and quality assurance with process safety management. Uh, we are very proud uh, to, to offer in our country the post-graduation course related with process safety. So at uh, this moment, we, we are in the fifth uh, class, okay? So we already have more than 120 people that some of them finish the first, uh, the first class and most of them are doing the post-graduation course uh, in process safety. Well, uh, we will talk about uh, facility siting. Uh, this is not a common topic uh, in our country. And if we consider uh, continents uh, like uh, Europe and United States, the facility site requirement uh, uh, got a lot of power after uh, the Texas City accident. Uh, I think that most of you know about the Texas uh, siege uh, accident, so which happened on March 23rd, 25, and the DP Texas City refiner experienced a severe explosion and fire accident involving a raffinate splinter tower in <coughs> the isomerization unit and associated with a blowdown system. Uh, this accident it, it resulted in 15 deaths and also 170 injuries and significant economic losses for the company. The accident was one of the most serious U.S. workplace disasters of the past two decades. The, the historical case of the event, all of the fatalities and many of the serious injuries occurred in or around the nine contractor trailers uh, that were sitting near, uh, sited near uh, process areas and as close as 121 feet from the eyes on unit. Uh, at the Texas City refinery, trailers had been periodically sited in and around, around hazard, uh, hazards process areas uh, for reasons of convenience such as ready access to work areas. The trailers did not need to be located as close as they were to the process areas in order for workers to perform their job. That is. Well, uh, if we analyze the recent years, uh, we can see that incidents have shown the need for the chemical industry to consider the location of both permanent and portable uh, occupied buildings on chemical production facility sites. <clears throat> Here, we can see a historical list of facility site incidents. And you can see also that the, uh, the, the most catastrophic event was the Mex uh, Mex Mexico City accident that we have an LPG line in rupture. Well, process incident, many process, uh, many units contain one or more hazard materials or conditions uh, that could, in the event of an incident, uh, result in a fire, in an explosion, in a overpressure, in a rupture of a, a, a physical protection barrier, or also a toxic gas release. This, uh, this event may affect a building, its occupants, and, or its housing function. Uh, it is desired for a building uh, to have the attributes indicated withstand the effects of such events. The strength uh, to withstand the overpressure or an explosion or uh, the fire retardants uh, to withstand a fire in order to protect the equipment or the function that it houses. Uh, facility site, what does it mean? Uh, facility siting focus on identifying hazard scenarios that could have significant impact on process plant buildings and building occupants. Relate with many different situations, many different uh, processes that we could have 
uh, hazard materials or a lot of energy. Uh, such studies include identifying vulnerable locations for occupied buildings, such as control room and temporary buildings, spacing between the adjacent facilities, and spacing between equipment and potential ignition, ignition sources. Uh, we have a very good reference of Center for Chemical Process Safety, a very good guideline related to a facility site and layout. And uh, you can see that in some chapters, for example, the, the, the chapter number three, uh, talking about preparing for the site selection process. So we have to collect critical information uh, required to select an appropriate site, identify issues of concern regarding the project that may impact site selection. Uh, when we talk about the, the site survey and selection, armed with data, decide which site to choose considering both the site itself and its surroundings. It's very important to consider the surroundings uh, close to the site. Well, uh, when we talk about layout, site and plant layout, layout the site, plant and units, considering the process and the sites surroundings, topograph and also the environment. And uh, layout the unit equipment, considering safe, maintenance and operational goals. It is related with defining the equipment layout and space. And finally, to optimize the layout, we have to consider all the other, uh, the other aspects and also all the risk analysis related uh, with this site. We have to optimize the layout uh, considering the risk reduction. Well, this slide is very important because we talk about the project development and also <laughs> the safety management opportunities that we have considering each phase of the project. So if we consider the project development, we are talking, uh, we can talk about some, some phases that are conceptual phase, decision to proceed, requirements established, plans finalized, management of change and pro uh, project complete. And in this project phase, we, uh, for example, in the beginning, we have to consider risk uh, when we are choosing the site, the location. Uh, we must consider uh, when we are between the conceptual phase and decision to proceed to establish loss prevention requirements. This moment is very, very important because if we don't have defined the equipment, the, the, the loss prevention requirements, you, you will not have defined uh, at, at the right moment, the, for example, the risk acceptability uh, metrics, and you will not define the engineering requirements for different disciplines, like electrical, mechanical, automation, instrumentation, piping, etc., etc. Where when we are defining requirements, we will have to identify and analyze hazards. When we are between the requirements established and plans finalized, we have to identify and analyze hazards and risks. And we have to monitor the risk implications of any change that can happen uh, during the different phase of the project. And also, we can't forget to do the commissioning and price startup safe review, where we have to assure that all the recommendations related with the risk analysis and all the checklists used uh, between the, the design reviews between each phase of the project had been done and all the recommendations had been implemented. Well, I, I will show you a business case related with facility siting, and it is very interesting because it's really a real case where we will find the, the, the legal, technical, uh, legal and technical requirements that we use for doing a uh, facility site and risk analysis, and also the steps that we must do, we must do to assure a facility, a good uh, facility site risk analysis. Well, 
the facility uh, store process and hazard materials, as we, we talked before. And facility site is currently considered as part of the covered process, process hazard analysis. However, to better review the hazards and potential impacts, we do like to conduct a quantitative facility site study in, accord, in accordance with legal requirements and global best practices. When we talk about, for example, sites, facilities in the United States and also some countries in Europe, facility siting uh, has been one of the most critical requirements that OSHA audits requires for all companies located in North America, Canada and some countries in Europe. Here in Brazil, we have some uh, events that happened uh, recently that showed the importance to, uh, to do the facility site quantitative risk analysis to evaluate uh, how uh, is this situation related with uh, uh, occupied buildings related with potential uh, major hazard scenarios. Uh, what's the proposed scope of the facility site? Well, the proposed is the scope is to evaluate the potential for fire, explosion, root, release of energy, and also to toxic chemical release, leading to impacts to on-site occupied buildings, on-site outdoor process or assembly areas, and off-site adjacent facilities. And will include, we have to incorporate and align the facility site is signed is a risk analysis with the uh, API RP 752 and 53 uh, guidelines, technical guidelines. And also we have some guidelines of Center for Chemical Process Safety, CCPS, facility site guidelines. And also we use the Holland GNO standards that support a lot of statistical references that support the risk analysis. Uh, we must do a review, a chemical review or energy review uh, following the NEFPA 704. We must do the, the, we use also the screening modeling of maximum credible events, MCEs, and also we must do the hazard the hazard uh, identification to evaluate and develop, develop the cases that we will select for the quantitative risk evaluation. The consequence based evaluation of hazards, fire, explosion, toxic release, and energy release and potential impacts. So, do the consequence risk analysis is fundamentally important, fundamentally important to, uh, to have the magnitude uh, of the, the consequence of the, the, process, the process scenario. The risk-based evaluation of selected hazards and identified vulnerable buildings areas, it includes the evaluation of available process safeguards to manage on-site hazards. In other words, if you have a process risk scenario, it's very important to evaluate, to know what are the safeguards, the, the safety barriers or the critical element controls that are the independent protection layers that will prevent or mitigate the, the, the risk scenario or the major hazard scenario that we have on the site. Uh, we must use a publicly available data for accident rates and site-specific uh, meteorological data. Uh, we must develop of hazards and risk uh, social to individual uh, for occupied buildings. So social and individual risk that are related with quantitative risk analysis uh, we must define for the science. And we must do a, a, a we must compare the risk criteria and development of risk reduction measures. So we must uh, have the results of quantitative risk analysis for uh, that facility. 
we must compare this with the legal requirements with the risk criteria, legal requirement, or if we don't have in the area, in the country or in the state, a uh, legal defined risk criteria, we must use uh, a reference, okay, or uh, the corporate risk criteria to analyze if the, the final risk of the unit uh, related to societal individual risk is uh, high or not. It's if it's attend or not the requirement. Well, after all this, these phases, these steps, we must generate the draft and final facility site report to evaluation and proof. Well, uh, the, the, uh, continuing with the objective scope and technical approach, we, we do the facility siting using the, the standards as we talked before, the API practice 752.53 and also the 756 that manages and that requires and has the requirement for management of hazard associated with location of process plant ends. And, and some other guidelines as we mentioned before. Well, the API, API sorry, recommended practice 752, uh, the, the, it focuses on hazards associated with location of process plant permanent buildings. Uh, it was issued in December 29 and was significantly revised compared to early editions. So we strictly recommend to use the last version of this API practice 752 in 2009. Uh, the focus of the third edition uh, is specifically about permanent buildings. So you can see that this revision is after the BP, the British Petroleum Accident that happened in 25. And so uh, this API standard uh, had a lot of changes, uh, critical changes. Uh, that must be considered during the facility site risk analysis. Well, uh, the API standard 753, uh, uh, it defines uh, the three zone method and it's applied for locating uh, portable buildings. So I, I recommend a lot, I strictly recommend that all companies must have a standard to locate portable buildings, trailers, etc. Because it's normal, uh, all companies do maintenance, all companies do projects, uh, uh, changes in the installation. So it's not rare to have portable buildings in, uh, inside the, the, the facilities, the sites and then we can have some portable buildings in a, in a dangerous area if it happens um, uh, on a, a major unwanted event. Well, each zone is based on the size of, <coughs> sorry, the congested process area and also the distance from the edge of this congested area to the portable building. Zone one is no large wood trailers and essential uh, personal only. So you can see here zone one, we can have the, the, uh, the, the distance, the vertical uh, line, and the horizontal, we have the volume, cubic feet, the congestion volume, cubic feet. And then we have the, the, this, relay, this area of zone, zone one that it defines the kind, the type of traders and also the, the, the distance. Zone two, uh, a trailer, trailer of any construction requires a detailed analysis. So if we have the, the portable buildings in zone two, it is required uh, a detailed risk analysis to install a portable building in this area. And zone three, any portable building can be cited. A detailed analysis may be either né, a consequence analysis or quantitative risk analysis. 
where uh, these guidelines uh, also uh, they provide the methodologies uh, for uh, identification of process hazards, consequence and impact analysis, likelihood analysis, calculation of risk, and presentation of risk results. Uh, to complete the facility site study, we, uh, we normally propose a six-step approach, followed by submit of a draft and final reports. So uh, we analyze uh, all the each step. We will discuss each one, and uh, after all the six steps, we generate a draft report and also a final report. The step one is project kickoff meeting. So the initial activity of the facility site project will be uh, a set of conference calls and web meetings with project team. Uh, the, the purpose of the kickoff meetings is to define the scope of the facility site study and determine information to collect before the site visit. The meetings, uh, the meeting talks will include a review and discussion of some topics. For example, what is the facility site process? It's, it's very important to be clear for the, the, the focal point of the client, the company. What is the study? What's the objective? And what are the steps that will happen during this uh, risk analysis? Uh, it's important to discuss the scheduling and deliverables, okay? It's important uh, to have the facility plot plan, and it's important to, to have the information of how is the distribution of people uh, inside the company that, that work in the site, okay, at the site, how is the distribution of these people uh, on occupied buildings? <laughs> okay, and this distribution must have the number of people and also the number of the time that these people occupy, okay, uh, are inside these buildings. And also in off site areas, uh, when we consider uh, occupied building and off site areas, when we have hazard, uh, hazard locations, okay. Uh, that hazard locations are areas that we have hazard products or hazard energies. Well, uh, NFPA 704 classification that we uh, it gives to us a screening of chemicals uh, for the siting uh, to be studied. So we must define this screening, <coughs> uh, considering what kind of chemicals and inventory of these chemicals has uh, have inside inside this uh, this facility? We must have the process safety information information the PSI uh, related with the systems, the process, the units inside the, the site, and also we must have a screen level consequence model. Uh, and finally. We must define it in the project kickoff meeting, the agenda, and all the, the, the preparation, uh, the plan for the site visit. As detailed above, you, we, as we can see above, and before the site visit, we, we work to identify all chemicals that will be included in the scope of the facility site study, and also all energy all equipment or area that we have with a major energy that if it release, it can uh, cause a uh, catastrophic or critical impact. Uh, the, the, all this information we use to, to do the, the, consequence, the consequence modeling uh, risk analysis. And this consequence model screening will be based on the definer of the, the maximum credible events uh, uh, developed with the site personnel. So we will discuss with the, the technical guys of the, the client to define the MCEs. 
And it will also define the final on-site chemicals and hazard materials areas or hazard energy areas that will be included in the HACID. So the HACID, uh, that is the hazard identification uh, scenarios, must be done in the step number two. The step number two, uh, it will include the site visit facilit uh, uh, facilitation. So we will do the facilitation of hazard identification that is preliminary, uh, uh, preliminary risk analysis, hazard operability risk analysis, FMEA, etc. And we will collect, we will do a collection and review of person safety information needed to complete the, the facility site study and also a completion of site facility checklist. So uh, the facility site risk analysis, it contains a lot of checklists that must be filled with these, with all information collected during the site visit. And it's, it's obviously that we site visit, the, we, the, the RNC also gets will be uh, working like, continuously with the, the site professionals and we, we, we anticipate the on-site work can be completed within at least one week. So it's important that in the maximum we, we spend in the site normally between three days to one week. Well, Hazid, uh, Hazid as in phase, we work with site personnel to develop the scenarios that will be included in the facility site uh, in the facility site study uh, based and based on the chemicals and hazard materials and areas screened in the step before the step number one <coughs> so then we propose uh, to develop several release scenarios for example tank areas uh, reactor areas, chemical storage areas, big energy storage area, areas, track loading and loading area. And all this will provide a range of hazards, also to on-site equipment buildings, on-site outdoor process, process and assembly areas, and also on-site adjacent facilities. Uh, continuously, uh, continuous uh, the site, the, the step two, Process data. Uh, we, in some case, some process we need the the, uh, the process flow diagrams, the PFTs, with material and mass balance uh, and operation uh, operating conditions, uh, pressure, temperature, and composition. So we must we need specific data on equipment time, size, volumes of areas, etc and also some information related to it, uh, some base that will, will uh, support the definition of the likelihood risk analysis that we will see in the step number four. The node selection, if we talk about uh, uh, hazard, uh, hazard operability, the hazard, so the term node, it's related with uh, it's defining a, a, a group of process equipments, so it can be a system or not, depends on the, the risk analysis tool that we are using. <laughs> and safety systems, <coughs> sorry, so the current safety system will be reviewed to estimate the availability of the system and if it functions as designed, the, the ability and time to detect the mitigator release from the operating room. Uh, the result of the safety system or the safety evaluation review will be the development of both mitigated and unmitigated scenarios that will be included in the site analysis with the likelihood uh, determined by the event free analysis. Uh, continuous uh, with the step two. We will, uh, we will have and we will list the occupied areas. So we will collect, including on site building uh, design characteristics and construction, 
and we will also uh, define the occupancy levels for process plant duties that they call, uh, we call the, in the facility site risk analysis EPPs. That's a process plant duties information and specification. So this information on buildings and on site areas that are designated for emergency response. And the, the, the adjacent open facilities also we must have some information related with how is the construction of the buildings uh, on site and also off site. Uh, uh, meteorological data. <coughs> so <coughs> we work with the company to collect and include the site specific meteorological data, uh, which may include. Uh, wind rolls, average ambient temperature, relative humidity, and typical day and night stability class, uh, wind speed combinations, etc. Site specific data. So, uh, the, the extent of the hazards from uh, energy release or hazard materials release, product release from the operating units is dependent on a number of site specific conditions. So as part of the site, uh, a walk through the site will be conducted to determine areas of confinement and congestion for the vapor cloud explosion modeling or energy release. Building construction and space, equipment layout drawings, uh, tight locations and dimensions of containment areas, and also verify information there, all, verify all the information there uh, depending upon. Uh, for, for finally, the sensitive, uh, sensitivity analysis. So, uh, as part of the, the project hazard risk mitigation recommendation, we must develop a fully completion of the current baseline facility site risk analysis. The recommendation benefits uh, that talks about hazard and risk reduction uh, based on the scope of the work option, it will, it will quantify. It will be quantified to assist in prioritizing the study results recommendations. It's very important. We must we must have uh, using, for example, a GU2 methodology, one, one tool that we can define the prioritization of the recommendations, the list of recommendations done by the facility site, because. Uh, depends on the, the, the hazard scenario, the major hazard scenario that exists in the facility and how uh, vulnerable are the buildings. Uh, some recommendations uh, can uh, introduce a lot of project redesign or maybe also a relocation of a building or relocation of people that are occupying some buildings that are not specified for that level of hazard. Well, here we, we can see the step three, uh, the consequence uh, in impact analysis. So we do the, the, uh, the consequence in a measure of the expected outcome. So we can see the level of energy or other or another uh, effect that we see uh, considering the, the, the point of release of energy or hazard in product and also the distance and the impact of uh, this energy release or hazard chemicals uh, considering the the uh, the point of release and also the the consequence of the mm -hmm. Here we can see as, uh, impacts uh, impacts related with fire, jet fire, coal fire, etc. Flammable dispersion, toxic dispersion, vapor cloud explosion, energy release. So if we have a rupture of a tank, a vessel. A reservatory, also a physical explosion, uh, 
uh, also a boiling liquid, uh, liquid that's made in vapor explosion, blade. Well, uh, the step number four, it's related with uh, likelihood analysis. So we must define the frequency or the probability <coughs> of the scenario, okay, of the occurrence of the scenario. And it is very important because if we have the consequence that is defined by the vulnerability risk analysis, the step three, and we uh, don't have the quantitative frequency defined by a reliable uh, risk analysis, we will have to consider only the frequency that was defined in the qualitative risk analysis. That sometimes uh, it's, it's maybe can be uh, uh, in a wrong estimation it can be a very uh, a safety definition, or it can be very wrong. The, the, the definition of likelihood of frequency, it, it is not maybe a good definition if, if we consider only the qualitative risk analysis. Well, it's important also when we do, uh, for example, we can use the dual lupa layer of protection analysis where we consider different uh, initiating event fail frequency for each scenario uh, and then we uh, we develop the, the analysis of the frequency of the initiating event fail of this scenario, specific scenario and also we uh, define the probability of fail on demand of each barrier defined as independent protection layer of this scenario and then we analyze the, the final frequency of the scenario and we evaluate if the final risk of the scenario attends or not the risk acceptability criteria. And then when we, when we analyze this risk, the final risk of the scenario, we will define if it's necessary or not new, new recommendations uh, to, to permit the, the scenario be located a medium risk or lower risk. So we know that we can't maintain uh, a risk scenario in a, in a red area or in a high risk, in a, in a high risk uh, location considering the risk accept acceptability metrics. Well, one of the, 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 the tools that we can use uh, to define the frequency of the scenario is the event tree. And also we can use the loop of that layer of protection analysis to define, the, to define the, the frequency or likelihood of the scenario. Well, uh, the step five is the risk integration and results. So, once the population data, consequence model results, and also the likelihood calculation, and whether data are collected, uh, the information will be all combined to generate the quantitative uh, facility citing risk result. Uh, in, addition to the, in addition to the risk of, of the initiating scenarios, uh, the results will assess the adequacy of existence, uh, existing site safety mitigation measures. And so the risk criteria that we are using to evaluate the, the, the risk of the site yeah, will be based on uh, internationally accepted the risk criteria or the company, the company will provide uh, for us, the risk criteria that he uses. Well, if what he uh, provides for us uh, is uh, not attending a legal requirement, we will do a, a recommendation for the company to try to, to do a revision in the risk criteria in order to attend the legal requirement risk criteria if the location that the facility is installed has the risk criteria. <coughs> well, 
the results uh, generated by the risk integration process, uh, it will be presented, uh, it will be consistent with all the new requirements of FCCPS guidelines, with the GNO uh, technical requirements, and also company and other uh, risk assessment guidelines. Well, uh, we, we, all these aspects uh, are considered to define these risk integration results and it's in a sense uh, the definition of the inherent risk of an impact, a risk scenario impact, when we have the already defined the location of each process. Here we can see uh, the definition of the geographic risk contour. Okay, uh, uh, we can see the the the, the graph the graphic representation, uh, considering the probability of fatalities and also the frequency of uh, these occurrences. So uh, the geographic risk is, is expressed in terms of impact per year, okay? And the geographic risk is independent of the actual population surround by giving hazard. Uh, thus, uh, it captures only the potential for impacts. The geographic risks, it's, uh, it takes into account the equipment fail rate data, okay, and also the conditions, environmental conditions of the location and the probability of these environmental uh, conditions, the impact zones and the vulnerability probabilities. It's, uh, in essence, the inherent risk of an impact at a given location from the process. As an example, a risk counter is presented below. So it's specific for this site. If we have another site, five kilometers, six kilometers, 10 kilometers from, uh, from this one, we have a different situation uh, considering these integration results. Well, uh, here we will see the, the conception of individual risk and social risk. Individual risk is a measure of the risk to a person in an acute building or outdoor location. This includes the nature of the injury uh, to the individual. For this analysis, the potential for fatalities is evaluated. But uh, uh, the likelihood of the injury occurring and the time period over which the injury might occur, that is, is exactly the consideration of building occupants. Additionally, individual risk will be developed based on the specific building design uh, classifications. So it is very important to uh, that step that we define the uh, specific building classification. So for all the buildings that exist in the site, and all the buildings that are uh, full-time occupant or partial-time occupant, we do a building design classification. It's a, 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 a long protocol that we, we, we go to the site and we uh, classify the, the, the building uh, considering all uh, the product, the material for construction, etc., etc. Social toll, uh, social toll risk. Uh, so, various geographic risk measures the risk potential. So, runs the uh, in this case we were considering one size in a, in a continent of uh, one client has operations and individual risk measure the risk to occupants, uh, to each of the building, social, social risk evaluates the predicted number of impacts based uh, upon the location and presence, probability of the population. So this is exactly what I, I, I told before, that we must uh, consider not only the, the consideration of, oh, uh, we can have a, per, a people or person in this building, or yes, but 
how is the presence of these people uh, in this building? So this measure of risk is site specific and highly dependent upon the physical location of people. The fraction of, the fraction of time they are present and whether they are located indoor or outdoors. Well, so here in the, uh, uh, in the step three, five, we, in the risk integration results, the social term risk estimates the, the, the potential impact and likelihood of each event. And here is defined by the FN curve, the maximum on-site risk criteria, okay? And the outcome, the event outcome frequency impacts that uh, also is an FN curve uh, and is generated, and we see if we have some area above the maximum uh, on-site risk criteria, we must analyze and we must define uh, which we are, or what are the, the scenarios that are a major impact uh, for this uh, Social, social risk uh, be out of the, the, the requirement, uh, risk criteria, and then uh, we must analyze uh, doing a, a very important uh, engineering risk and process risk, engineering, process engineering risk analysis, reevaluating this scenario, and also reevaluating the recommendations done for each of these scenarios, and then we, we, we work with the, our client to reduce the risk of the site in order to maintain the legal requirements and also to reduce the risk uh, to impact uh, outside people or community, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the step six that are the results presentation. So following generation of the draft results, a meeting, we schedule a, a meeting with the company and RSE attend the draft results presentation and well, we participate uh, via web meeting or also by a, a presence meeting. We, we RSC Consulting is a rep of architect that is a a worldwide uh, consultant company, uh, mainly uh, the headquarter is in USA, United States, and then we, with Aquatech, we do this uh, this, this facility site and risk analysis for many different installations, many different companies. Well, uh, so the, the results, the main report has all these topics. So the project overview, the scope, approach, data and assumptions, the chemical hazard and, and hazard materials and energy screening, the hazard identification scenarios, all the hazard risk analysis, the occupied buildings and construction occupants and also their definition, the classification of the occupied buildings, the consequence based impact results. So we, we show the, the consequence risk analysis for all the, the catastrophic and critical uh, scenarios. Uh, the risk results, uh, the quantitative risk analysis, so the risk results, the societal, individual, and geographic risk, in comparison with the, the risk criteria, in order to, to support our client to, to have the risk criteria of the site, of the unit, attending the, the legal requirement of risk criteria or the corporate risk criteria of the company. And also, we, it's very important uh, to, to, to us support our, our clients in order to have really recommendations that reduce the risk of the major hazard scenarios. Because uh, many, many risk analysis we can see, we see that many risk analysis and many companies uh, are implementing many, many CAPEX project, uh, project recommendations that are not efficient 
to reduce the risk. And this is uh, related because we have many risk analysis that are not very well done. And so uh, we input, we, 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 uh, some companies uh, doing a not very good risk analysis or not very good risk integration of all risk analysis, it maintains uh, some recommendations and some of them with high cost, high cost of investment, and they are not efficient to reduce the risk. Well, uh, 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 in the results, uh, also in the facility site report, we do additional company, uh, we, under, we analyze additional company needs, and also we discuss, and we, we introduce, we put in the, in the final report, doing the, some, some recommendations, considering also the results of the facility siting uh, risk analysis, in order to align all the leaders of the company and the technical uh, professionals to understand what are the next steps to be done and what are the prioritization to be done, considering that we have a lot of a lot of demands and we know that the resources sometimes are not very high. So I'd like to uh, to thanks. Uh, I'd like to thanks uh, very much the everyone. Uh, that uh, are participating in the, in the webinar. It's a pleasure, okay? Uh, I'd like also to mention to all of you that I've had at, at the last 20 years, uh, many opportunities to, to approve and also to monitor uh, the facility site risk analysis in facilities in Germany, in other countries of Europe, uh, in US, and Latin America, and it's very, it's very interesting to see how the different countries and how the the, the different risk criteria. Uh, in the past, it was more critical because nowadays uh, this difference of risk criteria is reducing. But 20 years ago, 15 years ago, we had uh, some. If you consider different countries, we had a lot of difference between uh, countries in Europe and US and in South and Latin America. So it was, it was a big challenge for us to define a corporate standard, okay, uh, that could, uh, that could uh, define a, a very good risk criteria to attend all the, the, legal, uh, the legal requirements of different countries and also attend uh, a, a very good or a benchmark risk criteria to be considered in the facility site and risk analysis. Uh, we have a question here that is, what's the concept of a maximum, maximum credible event? Okay, uh, it's a very good question. And it is related with uh, when when we when we talk about a credible uh, event, we are talking about what is effective the probability of this event uh, this event happens. So uh, normally the companies consider that uh, when we when we have in you know, likelihood one event that is the frequency 10, 10 minus, minus 6 or 10 minus, minus 7 okay of likelihood some companies uh, in the management process or in the management uh, uh, risk uh, decisions this they they consider that one event like this will never have happen and it's it's a, it's a very, very, very culture wrong conception and decision. Because uh, if we consider mainly when we talk about dynamic risk management, that dynamic uh, risk management is the consideration of uh, what, uh, what gives the, 
the low probability of when uh, this event happens. What defines the low probability of a, a risk scenario happens is the existence of uh, independent protection layers are the, the, the critical element controls. If we analyze in a, in a Europe technical uh, requirements that we call the critical control management, the CCMs, or the uh, critical uh, element controls, the ECCs, okay, that we in the US we call barriers or independent protection layers. If we consider that the, 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 the integrity and critical element controls are not good, the management of these processes are not good, this very low probability risk scenario will going on, will going into the high probability of this scenario happens. So the major unwanted events or the, the, <coughs> the maximum credible event né, is mainly the consideration that when I, 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 when I have the energy, the accumulated energy, or when I have a, a, the hazard of a chemical or a, a, the hazard of a chemical and energy, we cannot, uh, we cannot eliminate the probability of this, uh, of this risk scenario. So this is the, the main consideration. Uh, this is the main consideration of what we call the, the major unwanted events or the maximum credible event. Where shall I see if we have more some questions? We have okay. Oh, okay. Uh, we have some questions related with barriers management, and I will I will uh, I will explain to you because our time already exceeds. So, but we will have uh, the next webinars of uh, RSE Consulting uh, on next April 17. We will discuss the the business wins and operational wins. Uh, when we have a very good uh, critical element controls or barriers management uh, in, a, in a company, okay? So, I, we have some other questions. I will try to answer them in another opportunity. I will try to answer by email for the, the people that are participating. So, I would uh, more one time thank you very much the participation of uh, all of you, okay? And I am fully available to, uh, to support each professional and also each company in the next challenges related with uh, risk management development in our country. All right, more one time, thank you very much and have a good week for everyone. Thank you, bye-bye.